Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today we're looking at a $35 budget Sauron the Dark Lord EDH deck tech. Ward loving Sauron says whenever an opponent casts a spell, a mass orcs one. Whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts you. And whenever the ring tempts you, you may discard your hand. If you do, draw four cards. This deck is all about making a big orc army, having plenty of removal and graveyard recursion to have a big deadly army and batter down our opponents for the win. I can't wait to get into this deck. The Lord of the Rings. As we always do, we're starting off hot with all of that ramp. First up, we have some talismans in creativity to add colourless or either is it, and dominance to add colourless or either Demir, with those colour options dealing one damage to you. We complete the trio of talismans with indulgence to again add colourless or either Rakdos at the option of one life, and Demir signet to pay, tap, and add both Demir colours. Next up, we again round off in threes with the other two signet options, Is It and Rakdos. There's Commander Sphere to add one mana of any available to Sauron, also being able to be sacked for some card draw. And Felwar Stone to add one mana of any colour a land an opponent controls could produce. For the last two Rampy Rocks, we have Arcane Signet to add one mana of any of those Grixis colours. And finally, we have Soul Ring. Because Soul Ring. The One Ring. Before we get onto that Orc army, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe down below for all things MTG. Subscribing is completely free to do and it helps our channel grow and grow as we head towards 5,000 subscribers. Another way to help support the channel is to use our referral code GATHERING-THE-MAGIC when signing up to Card Market and shout out to Acid Breeze for using our code. Yeah, love to see it. Now it's time to look at our amazing Orc army. First up we have Planeswalker Angrath, Captain of Chaos, to give our creatures menace and a minus two option to amass two. And surrounded by orcs to amass orcs three. Then target player mills X, where X is the amassed army's power. We have the other Sauron, that when cast amasses orcs five. Mills five cards, then returns a creature from your graveyard to the field. Whenever a commander an opponent controls dies, the ring tempts you. There's Corsairs of Umbar that can make your orcs unblockable. One of it deals combat damage to a player, a mass orcs 3. And Fall of Care Andros, this is whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt non combat damage, a mass orcs X, where X is that excess damage. It can also deal 7 damage to target creature. We have Lazotep Chancellor, this is when you discard a card, you may pay 1. If you do, a mass 2. A Moria Scavenger, that you can tap and discard a card to draw a card. If the discarded card was a creature, a mass 1. Sauron loves that army, so by having every which way to make those orcs even bigger, we're having an even better chance of dealing some damage and having the ring tempt you. We've added Dreadhorde Invasion, that at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life and amass one. And Summons of Sauron, to amass orcs X, mill X cards. You may cast an instant or sorcery with mana value X or less from among them without paying its mana cost, with that beloved flashback. There's Saruman, the White Hand, this is whenever you cast a non-creature spell, a mass Orcs X, where X is that spell's mana value. An Orcish Medicine, to give target creature your choice of lifelink or indestructible until end of turn, a mass Orcs 1. We have Invade the City to amass X, where X is the number of instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard. And the Mouth of Sauron, the when ETB's target player mills 3. Then a mass Orcs X, where X is the number of instant or sorcery cards in that player's graveyard. Whilst we do have some great Amass cards from the Lord of the Rings set, Amass is a keyword that has been around since War of the Spark, so adding in plenty of cards introduced from previous sets is a great way to make this Orc army get even bigger, even quicker. Speaking of War of the Spark, we have Lazotep Plating to Amass 1. Permanents you control gain Hexproof until end of turn, and commence the endgame that cannot be countered. Draw 2 cards, then Amass X, where X is the number of cards in your hand. We have Saruman's Trickery to counter target spell, a mass Orcs 1. And Callus Dismissal to return target non land permanent to its owner's hand, a mass 1. We have Grishnak, a brash instigator, that when ETBs, a mass Orcs 2. When you do, until end of turn, gain control of target non legendary creature and opponent controls with power less than or equal to the amassed army's power. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. And Swarming of Moria to create a treasure token and a mass Orcs 2. With 4 to go, we have Treason of Isengard to put up to 1 target instant or sorcery from your graveyard on top of your library. Amass Orcs 2. And Widespread Brutality to amass 2. Then the army you amass deals damage equal to its power to each non army creature. We have Orcish Siege Master to give Orcs you control trample. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus 0 until end of turn, where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control. 
and Book of Marzable to amass Orcs 1, then 2, then give creatures you control plus 1 plus 0 and gain Menace until end of turn. Now it's time to look at everything removal and recursion this deck has to offer. Some classics to open with in Feed the Swarm to destroy target creature or enchantment an opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanent's mana value. And Bedevil to destroy target artifact, creature or planeswalker. There's Terminate to destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. And Claim the Precious to destroy target creature, the ring tempts you. We have Big Bad Blasphemous Act to deal 13 damage to each creature and Ring Wraiths, that when ETBs, target creature and opponent controls gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. If target creature is legendary, its controller loses three life. And when the ring tempts you, return Ring Wraiths from your graveyard to your hand. There's Crippling Fear to choose a creature type. Creatures that aren't of that type gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. And Languish to give all creatures minus four, minus four until end of turn. With a hopefully big Orc army, this could turn into a one-sided board wipe. We've added Rampaging War Mammoth. This is when you cycle it, destroy up to X artifacts. And huge card Living Death to make each player exile all creature cards from their graveyards, then sack all creatures they control. Then put all cards exiled this way onto the field. There's Extract from Darkness to make each player mill two cards, then put a creature from a graveyard onto the field under your control. And Dread Return to return target creature from your graveyard onto the field with some spicy flashback. With plenty of milling action in this deck, we want to make sure there is plenty of recursion. If those big cards are getting killed or accidentally milled, you bet they'll be coming back to deal more damage or hit more ETB triggers over and over again. We have new card Too Greedily, Too Deep to put target creature from a graveyard onto the field under your control. That creature deals damage equal to its power to each creature. And Fact or Fiction to reveal the top 5 cards of your library, an opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other pile into your graveyard. Lastly we have Consider to look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard, draw a card. And Forbidden Alchemy to look at the top 4 cards of your library. Put one in your hand and the rest into your graveyard with flashback. Before we finish up with all of those lands, we're looking at the best of the rest in this budget brew. First with key card Herald of Secret Streams, this is creatures you control with plus one plus one counts on them can't be blocked. Imagine a big orc army that's unblockable, absolutely deadly. And wonder that if it's in your graveyard with an island, creatures you control have flying. There's Nightscape Familiar, this is blue and red spells you cast cost one less to cast. There's Nightscape Familiar, this is blue and red spells you cast cost one less to cast. And the Balrog, Durin's Bane, that cost one less to cast for each permanent sack this turn. It can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. And when it dies, destroy target artifact or creature an opponent controls. We've added Deep Analysis to draw two cards with Flashback and Thrill of Possibility to discard a card, then draw two cards. There's Faithless Looting to draw two cards, then discard two cards with Flashback. And Beloved Blue Instant Frantic Search to draw two cards, then discard two cards. Untap up to three lands. There's Lidless Gaze to exile the top card of each player's library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. A mana of any type can be spent to cast them. Again, another card with Flashback and Fiery Inscription that when ETBs, the ring tempts you. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Fiery Inscription deals two damage to each opponent. On to the last three cards, we have Glorious Gale to counter target creature spell. If it was a legendary spell, the ring tempts you. And of course, a classic blue counter spell in the gate to counter target non-creature spell. And to round off with all the milling and killing, we have Sir Conrad the Grim. This is whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent with that added option to pay and make each player mill a card. And now, as we always do, we're rounding off this budget brew with all of those lands. First off, starting with the basics. And in this deck, we have nine island and nine mountain. Then closely followed with 10 Swamp as we do have slightly more black cards in this deck. We have some classics in Command Tower to add one mana of any colour in our commander's colour identity and Exotic Orchard to add one mana of any colour that a land and opponent controls could produce. We have Evolving Worlds and Terramorphic Expanse that can both be tapped and sacked to search out a basic land, putting it onto the field tapped. We have Crumbling Necropolis that enters the battlefield tapped and adds any of those Grixis colours and Contaminated Aquifier, again entering tapped, but gives us either of those Demir options. And for the last two lands in this deck, we have Geothermal Bog and Molten Tributary. Sauron the Dark Lord is an insanely powerful commander from the Lord of the Rings set, and one that I've already played against, and can tell you, it is deadly. 
and I know I always say it, but it does make me want to build my own Sauron deck. There we have it, that is the Sauron the Dark Lord $35 budget EDH deck deck. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe down below for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description box below for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out, so I'll see you in the next video.